If you divorce your wife three times, she cannot come back unless you send her to somebody else to F her. Treatment of the Quran versus the Bible, you coward son of Muta. Look at this religion. Let me open the screen for you. We thought it's a man who wanna call me. It turned to be a kid who believed that the Arab are a scam and he do not need to understand the Quran in any language because he is superior. You do not need to know Arabic to know the Quran meaning. Okay. If you divorce your wife three times, okay, what we will do? She cannot go back to her previous husband unless she if a new husband. The treatment of women. Do you see it? Do we have that in the Bible? The man he forbid, the man is forbidden in the Bible to multiply his wives. I know you will say to me that David he did, but God he condemned him. He punished him actually. And the story itself is exists in the Quran too. <clears throat> but the difference is in the Quran, Allah praised him for having many women. The Bible condemned the ones who do so. And Jesus, he said to them, it's been said to you, I say to you. He make it so hard for Christians to divorce. Here, you say you are divorced, eh, three times. The woman, she can't go back to her husband unless he go and sleep with different one. And if you remember the story of the woman who she been beaten by her husband, until he made her skin greener than her clothes. Greener? Actually, this is where the verse is coming from about beating the women. So this man, <clears throat> uh, his name is Rifa. Uh, the, uh, the man is Rimi Rifa. He divorced his wife. And then uh, Abdul Rahman, he married her. Okay. Aisha, she said that the lady, the wife, she came and she was wearing a green veil. And she complained to Aisha about her husband and she showed her the beating spot. Her skin is greener than her clothes. And then Aisha, she said, <clears throat> oh, I never seen, I have not seen any woman suffering as much as a Muslim woman. Aisha, she was witnessing in the time of Muhammad that the most suffering women is Muslim women. Why? Because of the beating. Look, her skin greener than her clothes. Okay, why? Then Abdul Rahman, he heard that his wife, she's gone to the Prophet, so he came. And now the conversation start. The wife, she claimed that Abdul Rahman, he cannot do boom boom. Abdul Rahman, he said, she's a liar. I can do boom boom and satisfy her. I'm so good. And then Muhammad, he made have to make a judgment. Look what he said. After he said, she has told a lie. I'm very strong in bed. I can satisfy her private part. I can show you to you even. It's hard already. But she is dishonest. And want to go back to Rafa. Ah. Now we ask ourselves here, what kind of a decent society is this? The woman, she is married to a man, but she want to go back to a different man. So why she married him? Because of the stupid rule of the stupid Muhammad. She thought, she will marry this old man. She will refuse to sleep with him. He will divorce her. She go back to her previous husband. <laughs> and then, a line messenger to her said to her, ah, if that is your intention, then you should know. It's unlawful for you to remarry Rifa unless, uh, listen to what? Unless Abdul Rahman he tastes your juice. You see the translation, he says, you have intercourse. In Arabic, it doesn't say that. It says, Hatta yadhuq wa usayilataki, until he tastes your orgasm, is your, 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 you know, your, and you taste his orgasm. Can you believe it? So now those women, she wanna go back to her previous husband, her children, obviously, he's an idiot, 
but she want to go back mostly to his her children. But she cannot go unless a new guy he tastes her juice, and she tastes her juice too. Masha Allah. You know this guy, his name Apostate Prophet. He have a girl. She is wearing the clothes like a terrorist, and she said, "Krishati, feeling modesty." So she is seeking modesty. Ah, this is modesty. See the modesty? Unless he tastes your juice. What is the condition to go to reprieve his husband? This guy in the front of you, he have to taste your vagina. And you have to taste his penis. And then, then he divorce you. And then you can go back to the previous husband. And she said to the to Abu said Prophet, Christianity filled with modesty. <laughs> you know, the translation is even more funny. Look, taste your sweetness. What is that? Hey, hey women, you have a sweetness? Where is that located exactly? So one translation says sexual intercourse and the other translation says is a sweetness. I mean, how in the world, like I, we know that it means sweet, it means uh, sex, but it doesn't say uh, sexual intercourse. It says to taste your juice. And then if we go and check in the, in the dictionary, and I made a video about it, you can check it out. You will find that the word Osaila means orgasm, literally. So until he tastes your, your, your orgasm, and you taste his orgasm. And this guy, he said, you want to compare between the treatment of the women in the Bible? The Bible says, Jesus said, <clears throat> that the man is the Lord of the, his house. He's the head of the house. But he gave himself to his wife the same as a Christ he gave himself to the church. So the Bible make the women equal to the church. And the man is the Lord to serve, not the Lord to be dictator. The Messiah, he gave himself to the church. He did not ask the church to give herself to him. The church is us. So the Messiah is the only person ever who made the women equal to the most holy let's say, uh, title, which is the church for the Christians. And not only that, all of us, we knew that the Messiah is born of the Virgin Mary. So if women are bad, actually, this was the view of the Jews. Always they look at the women bad, in a bad way. So Jesus, he corrected them and he showed them that they are absolutely false in their understanding, even for the Old Testament. He himself, he come through a woman. You see, Jesus, he said to the Jews, what, what say you of Christ? They said, well, he is a son of David. David, he's, Jesus, he said, well, if he is a son of David, then how David call him my Lord? You see, it's, a, it's, a, it's an honor for anyone, <clears throat> a Jew, an Israeli, to be called the son of David. This is a big honor for them. This is the most powerful king they have. David. Jesus said to them, but if he is the son of David, then how David call him? My Lord. The Lord said to my Lord, sit in my right. But Jesus, for sure, he is the son of Mary. And Mary is a female. We don't worship Mary. But if women are bad, God will never choose to come through a woman. And actually, whoever believes that women are bad, well, that's mean you are bad too, because you came from them. The tree give a fruit. 
And if the women are bad, you are well the fruit of this tree. So a person who is saying women are bad, he is saying his mother is a whore. Is disrespecting his mother. <clears throat> and you know, the funny is that women are bad and the Mohammedan, they are dying to have more women. And their heaven has nothing except sex with women and men, actually. You know, uh, uh, Muhammad, he said that the majority of w uh, women, they go to hell. But if you think about it, Muhammad, the foolish man, he exposed himself again because if the majority of the uh, of uh, of uh, hell is women, so why the heaven is the the ra the ratio of uh, of men to women in heaven, Islamic heaven, is one to seventy two at least. <laughs> so in reality, the majority of hell uh, of heaven is women. I mean, this is stupidity. Women are so bad, but we will make the heaven full of women. Wine is so bad, what will give you a river of wine? What a stupid cult. Muhammad, he claimed that the majority of women, they are going to go to hell because they have a lack of intelligence, deficiency. And they have deficiency in wisdom and religion. But obviously the one who made this statement, he is the one who is suffering from deficiency and he's stupid. Because he explained why. Why women they have deficiency? He says, because the Quran. Isn't the Quran says that one woman, two women equal to one man as a witness? So he's using his stupid book to prove that they have deficiency. Can you believe it? I make a book and I say to you, open my book. In my book it says, I decide that two women equal to one man to be witness. Why? Because women are stupid. But you know, uh, <laughs> All of us we knew in the case of witnesses women they are better witnesses from men if you go with your wife to a dinner or a party or a wedding and you come back and we ask you what you ate you want to remember ask the wife the wife she remember what the bride was wearing what her rings what her earring what the clothes what the color what her sister was wearing what the what the bro i mean she remember everything the guy who was there he remember nothing this is true. So how in the world this is stupid Muhammad he claim that women they have half a brain and their memory is not good and they can witness only in the case of borrowing money when one woman she can remember what 10 men cannot remember. Actually even scientific studies prove such a thing that women they have better memory. Right? All this religion is made, you know, one a Somalian woman, she spoke to me this many years ago, and she decided to leave Islam. But then she said to me, you know, I'm not leaving Islam really because of you, even though like, you know, help me, etc. But I decided to leave Islam because I discovered that Islam is made by the man for the man. This is a man made religion, made for the man, made for gang fighters, who want to die for the filthy Muhammad. So he was looking for a drugs. How I can control them? Virgin, their vagina looked like this. Their ass looked like that. He described even the size of the ass. He described even how they will do sex. Dahman, Dahman. Which means you hit so hard when you do it. You push it so hard. Can you believe it? How? I mean, what kind of a prophet this prophet is? But he's speaking to savage people like him, people of the desert, and civilized people. They take a shower once a year. Even when Muhammad, he take a shower, just to show you what kind of society we're talking about. The Muslim, they say, the Prophet, he taught us how to be clean. You know, the Arab, they made fun of Muhammad because they are not low class like him. The rest are not. So once a, an, an Arab person, he says to a Muslim, he said, well, your Prophet, he teach you even how to do shit. He said, yes, the prophet, he teaches even how to do shit. And then you ask yourself, who is the one exactly who joined Muhammad in his religion to the point they do not know how to do shit? 
Literally, by the way, I'm not using the like bad language. This is exactly what it says in Arabic. Your friend Muhammad, he is teaching you how to do shit. And this is the word khara in front of us in Arabic. He said to him, قال له رجل إن صاحبكم ليعلمكم حتى الخراء. Your friend Muhammad, he teach you even how to do shit. But why? Even cats they know how to do it. So this guy, you have nothing. He start putting rules for everything. Uh, how to do shit? How to shake your? What? Why you are telling them you have to shake your penis three times after you piss? What does that mean exactly? And what will happen if you shake it four times? It's going to collapse. Why three times? Why you clean your ass three times? What does that mean? Three rocks. You shake your penis three times. What does that mean? If you enter the, the bathroom with the, with the right foot, Shaitan, he will play with your anus. Shaitan, he sleep in your nose. He piss in your ears. He take hair from your ass. This is the teaching of Muhammad. How in the world anyone can believe in such a garbage? And then they say, we want to do da'wah. Da'wah to who? So, you know, Islam hunt on the ignorance. Your ignorance is your enemy. Or maybe some people, they have little brain. Or some people, they are under influence of drugs, maybe. But Islam does not, not only does it make sense, it's not even humane. Is it humane to have sex with the children? They are infant. It's allowed for a Muslim to marry a child, even if she is an infant. However, he should not have sex with her, but he can molest her. This is inhumane. And if she is over the age, or she reached the age of nine, he can have intercourse. Before that, he can touch her. He can kiss her. He can put his private part between her legs. Actually, I have a debate. You can search it in Google, in YouTube. Search having sex with baby. Debate, Christian Prince. I was speaking to a Muslim doctor. He said, what's wrong with that? He said, I am allowed to do so. What's the problem? But I did not do it. Isn't it enough, you know, to, to, to agree that this is satanic? <clears throat> so this guy, this poor guy, you know, from Africa, Ultimate Four, one day he will say to his wife, three times I divorce you. Now he is in trouble. He, she cannot come back to him unless she, he, he called his friend. Actually, there's a guy. Let me see if I can find you. There's a guy. He called the Azhar, the highest authority in Egypt. He told them, I did marry 33 women. How many? 33 women. And the purpose is to fix their divorce, which means they are divorced three times. They cannot go back to their husband. So this guy, they pay him money to sleep with the women. Let me see if I can find you the, the video. I look for a, I look for a, a video I found the millions. <laughs> but this is not the one I want. It is uh, maybe we need to change. Give me a minute. I mean, this guy is doing charity. You know, 33 times only. How nice you are. And all of this, 
is just to fix the problem in the Quran. Here we go, I found it. This is a new was just was was just one day ago. One day ago. Let me put it for you in the screen, hold on. This is an Islamic website. Qadiyat al muhallil al Musri. Muhallil is the one who sleep with the wife, you divorce. Muhallil means uh, like make, make her halal. So he's muhallil. So his job is to sleep with your wife, which you divorce already, in order later he will divorce her so you can go back and have her. Let's translate to English. As you see, this is a fresh news. not translating let us try again it says always translate I'm not sure why it's not working let me try something else hold on I will refresh the page and we will try again Uh, for some reason is not translating. Let us try without going to the main page. We will try here. Let us see. The case of Egyptian Muhallil who married th 33 time. 33 times, one day ago. Even the BBC is speaking about it. And the reason it became, became so famous because this guy, he went in TV to tell his experience how he liked it. <laughs> He's encouraging other Muslims to do the same. <laughs> and the funny translation says, analysis, it's not. It says, muhallil, which means the one who makes her halal. After a young man announced his marriage to a 33 women, all of them, he married them, which means he effed them, so they can go back to their husband. That's why here it says, the muhallil is a man who marries a woman who has divorced three times from her ex-husband. Do you see it? We could not translate using Google Translation when we go to the main page. But in the search engine, we were able to do that. So this man who married, as you see, who is this muhallil? He simply is a man who married a woman who has been divorced three times from her ex-husband -ex with the aim of allowing uh, a, a Sunni man to marry or to remarry his divorced wife three times. So this guy is doing charity, brother. You see the... You see the modesty of this religion? I'm going to move to Egypt. Oh, I don't know what I'm doing here. I go to Egypt right now. I will open an office of Muhallil. And any woman she got divorced from her husband. And she need my help. I will be happy to help her. This is a religion. 33 women. All of this just to fix the stupidity of the Quran. What, what Muhammad he got from this? Like a woman, she can't go back. A Muslim, they say to you, oh, so the man, he will not divorce his wife easy. Well, if you don't want her to divorce easy, we'll make the divorce hard, not by saying a statement. Okay, I just received it. Uh, I received a message that a woman, she said she is divorced. Guys, I'm going to get busy. Sorry. Uh, there's a woman, she got divorced three times, and she just sent me a message. And um, she said she is uh, <clears throat> interested in the service. 
Looks like we got customers. What the heck with this cult? And this potato from Nigeria, whatever he is, he says, you want to show me the treatment of the women in the Bible? You know? Hmm. Uh, you know, uh, uh, ultimate part, just to show you how stupid you are. If I show you the same rules in your religion, what you would do? You are just, you are a certified monkey. Donkey. In here, if a, if a man, he sleep with a woman, he have to marry her. In Islam, if a man, he, he sleep with women, what is the solution? He have to marry her too. Do you want me to show you the rules? You are a certified idiot. Muhammad is trying to copy the laws of Moses. And the man, he cannot divorce her. Why? Because you cannot use this woman and then throw her in the street. So this is not bad. This man, he sleep with this woman. And now he want to, oh, I did not know you. So, and you know, remember, this is a very, a very strict society. This woman, nobody will marry her. That's it. He damaged her reputation. He, he, you know, nobody will marry her. So the man, he have to fix his guilt, which he is partner with him anyway, and he have to marry her. And he cannot divorce her. He cannot do it temporarily just because they force him. He cannot use her and throw her in the garbage. And then Muhammad, the coward, he tried to copy that. There's a story of a woman, uh, and we can show the reference. She was dying in the desert. And she saw Abdul, Muslim. He is coming in his camel. She said, please give me some food, give me some water, I'm dying. He said, I will, if you let me sleep with you. If you let me sleep with you. When the woman, she went to town, she, she let him sleep. Because what she can do? She will die. When the woman, she went to town and she came to the Caliphate Omar, she said to him, do you know what this man did to me? He forced me. He forced me. He raped me. And she told him what happened. Omar, he said, Mahar, Mahar, Mahar. Which means, well, he did not really rape you. He gave you some water and some food. You took off your panty. It was marriage. <laughs> mahar, mahar, mahar. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh, okay. <clears throat> Let us see. Do we have any Muhammadan here? Let us see. I'm trying to find you a hadith, so just, you know, for entertainment purpose. And same time, education. No, we could not find it in English. Um, But anyway, I have tons, I have tons of reference about you can have you know you you know you marry a woman you step with her already. 
we have this guy is trying to call can you explain to me uh corinthian and why you are calling me just to explain to you this verse you know, and this is not our topic anyway Uh, but anyway, as long as you are asking, you know, a, a Muslim Abdul is saying, can you explain to me First Corinthian about as uh, uh, the women should remain silent? You know, those who, who, you know, who quote those verses, they are quoting them for a reason. Not to ask question, but to question. But this is a good thing, because this will give an answer for the Christians. I find it very funny and very stupid that a human being, he is an adult. He chose for me to read for him from verse this to verse that. Why don't I read the whole verse? What is exactly stopping you from asking to read the whole thing? Because if you read the whole thing, you will get me busted. I don't want you to read the whole thing. The whole thing is no, no. Read for me one, those two verses only. Cowards. The Bible speak about women, they are prophets. Women, they can prophesy. Women, they are judges. There's a book, it's called the Book of Judges. So they say to you, well, in 1 Corinthians, it says women, they have to stay silent. This is about women who they are speaking about things have nothing to do with the church. A woman, she go to tell her friend, did you do what I got yesterday for lunch? Why you are a liar? Why people they have no dignity? Why they claim they cannot see? No dignity. The teacher is the man. Women are sitting in the church and they are talking about a different topic. Those women, they should stay silent and listen. They should respect the church because the one who used to do that, it was women. It was not the men. That's why the verse was meant for the women. But because those people, they have no dignity and they are doing their best, trying to find a reasoning to refuse a Christianity. Why the women, she have to stay silent? But all of us, we knew that women, they don't stay silent. Mary, she was not silent. The one who went to the grave and the one who told the disciples, they were not silent. The one they were teaching with the disciples, they were not silent. They are teaching. So this is what you found about the Bible is wrong for you. If you open your TV, you will see tens of thousands of Christians, women teaching in churches. So how come you not ask yourself how they cannot, they have to stay silent in the church, but we have women teaching the Bible. And isn't it the same verses saying, so for you, for ye, may all prophesy one by one, Learn and all may be comforted. Uh. You know, remember that's. When somebody want to quote a statement from the Bible, anyone want to quote for you a statement from the Bible? You have to quote the Bible, not only a verse. In the same time, the Muslims are not allowed to speak in the mosque. They aren't even allowed to be in the mosque. Not only they are not allowed to talk, 
they are not allowed to be in the mosque. And now, like now, they put, uh, they put a sheet and they separate the mosque, but all of us, we knew that the mosque was not, never was for women. So as you see in Christianity, women, they come to the church, but the one, the teachers, are the disciples. Women, they are learning. So a person is learning, he cannot be a teacher. But all of us, we knew that nobody speak about prophets. They are women except the Bible. If you go right now and search in Google, take you two seconds. Women prophet, women prophet in the Bible. Actually, I would do that right now. Can you name for me one prophet? She is a woman in the Quran or in Islam? So if women cannot really talk, then women, they cannot be prophets. Because the first thing prophets they have to do is to talk. I just searched in Google. I did not even search for anything. I said, I searched women prophet in the Bible. Then female prophets in the Bible. Who are they, those prophets? Women who they are prophet in the Bible. And they give you all the reference. So those are not questions to ask those questions of evil. Because you know that women in Christianity is not treated as you claim. But you did not find from all the Bible except this verse says women, they should stay silent in the church. Ask your husband. But then we have women, they are prophets. So obviously these women, they are asking questions have nothing to do, or they are speaking about things have nothing to do with the purpose of this meeting. Anything else? And you know, it's not a secret that women, they speak way more than men. They go to a place, some women, sadly, and they cannot keep their mouth shut. They have to talk about things have nothing to do with the reasoning of why they are there. So some, obviously, and this is why this mention, there is some women, they are going there to social, maybe. Uh... What about Allah daughters? Yeah, this is a different topic. Anything else, guys? And as long as this guy, he called himself the Muslim apologist, Is that uh, a real apologist? Let us call him then. It says he is not online. The Muslim apologist. How sad. They beat the women. They rape the women, they have sex with the children, and they are upset from a verse from the Bible that says women, they should stay silent. <laughs> That's a good one. I mean, do you see how evil the Bible? Women, they should stay silent. How do you accept that? Look who is talking. Oh.
somebody is saying to me there's a person he is saying blah 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 about you i hope you can destroy him my friend they can say whatever they want about me who care focus in the head of the snake muhammad don't focus on abdul if this guy you have the courage let him come to me and text me and call me i will call him um Uh, here we have a person from Nigeria. Look like he's an ex-Muslim. He's saying thank you very much, etc. Wonderful. From Nigeria. He's an ex-Muslim. Um, I mean, this Skype is really... This is why I don't like Skype. I mean, you find there's like 10,000 messages waiting for me. I have a question you said previously in the video. I actually she was five, not six, according to Islamic calendar. I explained that. But Islamic calendar is shorter. So she will complete the six when she is not six yet. As simple as that. Uh, if every every year there's ten days shorter, if there's this is the shorter, so then in in six years, when they say six years, that means there's sixty days different, at least. Uh, here we see. I'm receiving too many messages, most of them. Here we have a person asking a question about the barrier of Jesus. He said, Jesus, he said the three days, three nights, I will be in the belly of the, of, uh, of the earth or the heart, like Jonah. But he was crucified Friday evening and raised on Sunday morning. Now, how, uh, how that it will be three days, three nights? My friend, this is because of the wrong understanding you have. Jesus was not crucified in a Friday. You know, many people, they think because it says the next day was Sabbath, they think, oh, next day it was Sabbath, which means Saturday. Sabbath, it was the holiday of the Jews. It was not Saturday. Sabbath. Is not Sabbath is a word mean holiday. It can be Saturday too. So they have a holiday is coming. So they think because this, the day it says the day after is going to be Sabbath. So obviously it was a Friday. But this is because those who have a short understanding of the Bible. Uh, there is nowhere in the Bible it says that Jesus was crucified in such a day as you claim or as you say it and uh, it's just based on wrong understanding and remember you know the day in 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 for the jews is start by the sunset the day for the jews is start in the sunset time so if you if they take jesus to the cross uh, wednesday and then uh, his crucifixion happen after sunset that would be thursday if the crucifixion happened before the sunset, that is Wednesday. You know what I mean? It's not like now. Now it is 24 hours, and the 24 hours pass by 12 midnight. So by 12 midnight now, for me, I have 20 minutes left. It's going to be a new day. It's going to be uh, Friday. For the Jews, Long time ago, many hours ago, it's already Friday, or it is the sunset time. So sunset is the day. It's not 12 hours normal, we see it now. In addition to that, this is a wrong understanding. There's tons of articles, you can search them and you will find, they explain to you in details that Jesus did not, and he was not really crucified in such a day. This is a wrong understanding of people who they, they go by the word saying Sabbath. Sabbath is just a word mean holiday.
Um, no, no, regardless of a three days or three nights, no, it says, but you see, uh, but where it says he was, uh, which day it was, uh, he was crucified, nowhere, you know, all what, the, all what you have, it's the day after is a Sabbath, and people, what they know, Sabbath means Saturday, right? But Sabbath is not really Saturday. Any day is a Sabbath as long as it's a holiday. Um, and you know they have different way to set the time to talk about time. So morning have different, uh, you know, a certain uh, phrase of hours or let us say. Uh, bracket of hours, noon have the certain bracket of hours, night time. If you go, this is why Muhammad he was trying to copy the Jews. If you go in the Quran, see the Muslim they say to you, We pray five times a day, right? But in fact, Muhammad was trying to copy the Jews. So the sunset is where the Muslim prayers stop. And then Muhammad, he, he found that the Jews, they even pray more. But look what the Quran says. Chapter 11, verse number 114, it says, and establish the regular prayer in the two ends of the day. But the day does not have two ends. How, how did they have two ends? Do you know what I mean? Uh, have you ever heard of something have two ends? Especially while talking about time. The two ends of the day. So, what Muhammad is trying to do here, he's trying to adopt little, little by little, the Jewish, uh, you know, timing system. So, he he decided to to come with the, with an idea that you know what, uh, the day start in certain time and the day end in certain time, but the start is the end of other day. The start is the end of the other day. Otherwise, there's no to end of the days. And then he says, and at the approach of the night. So how, what, what do you mean the two ends of the two days approach of night? How that can be? If this is the sunset, of the previous day and then the sunset of the other day that will not be right if this is the morning like the the the, the, the dawn uh, the, the sunrise this is not the end of the day this is the start of the day so obviously Muhammad was very confused about how to pray and when to pray it and later he changed it actually even the Muslims agree that the one who taught Muhammad about how many times to pray, it was Musa's. Allah, he went, uh, Muhammad, he went to Allah. Allah told him, supposedly, to pray 50 times. Musa's, he keep asking for discount, and then they come to the solution of five times. But the Quran say three. And then if we ask the Muslims now, what is the two days? The two end of the days. Then you will find everyone give you different interpretation. If you go right now, this is chapter 11, verse 114. The Muslim, they have to try to find a solution for this. And always, they will come with a solution. They will find an exit. Then if they don't have exit, they will say Allah knows best, as usual. Read carefully. We fill the prayer at the two end of the day, the morning prayer and the noontime prayer. But this, how this is the end of the day? The, have you ever heard of such a stupid thing? How the morning prayer is the end of a day and how the noontime is the end of a day? Does that mean the day is 12 hours or 6 hours? 6 hours. <laughs> It doesn't make sense. 
So the, the Muhammadan, when Muhammad he make poopoo, they try to find a solution for this poopoo, but this is this this is cannot be solved. Either Muhammad he did not explain what he is saying and the Muslim they get it wrong, or what Muhammad is saying doesn't make sense and the Muslim they get it right. Which one? Because who in the world will believe that the morning is the end of a day and the noon time is an end of a day? And if the Quran is saying you pray those two prayers and when the night approach, that is a three time, that's it. Where the five is coming from? Um, any other question? Anyone can tell us how the middle of the day is the end of the day? Noon time is not the middle. It's not the end of the day. Since when? This is the Muslim interpretation, not me, not mine. You know, it's not my. My understanding this is what they say establish the prayer at the two end of the days and then they say the morning prayer and the zohr zohr is the noon time zohr is the middle of the day like 12 o'clock but how this is the two end of the day i mean the, the day just started what is the what is the system of timing the muslims they're following what what is the system of timing allah is trying to to uh, to teach us here if Allah is God. Yeah, Jesus, he, you know, died. This is why they were meeting, and this is why actually there was a big celebration, and this is why they have to take him down from the cross because it was the Passover, and the Passover is not Saturday. It wasn't Saturday. It was Sabbath. But you know, the ones who don't understand. You see, for us, because we are not Hebrew, the same as when you read in Arabic, you do not know what word, you know, like the Muslims, even the word Sabbath in, in, in Arabic is not really Arabic word. You see, even the Quran uses the same word. You see how many times Muhammad he used the word Sabbath, 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 all, all over. Okay? Uh, and then we ask ourselves, if we ask the Muslim, what is the Sabbath mean? We say Saturday. But Sabbath, it's not really Saturday. It can be used for Saturday. Sabbath is any day you designate to the Lord. Any day. Okay, hold on. I think now it's okay. I noticed that this microphone, if you speak too many hours, this issue happened. If I speak for not long, it's, it's okay. So I think now it's better. <clears throat> and you know, because Muhammad, he stole everything. Uh, and you notice how the Quran speak about how important the Sabbath. You know, why, why Allah cursing the Jews, making them monkeys for breaking the Sabbath? <laughs> Hello, CP. Yes, uh, Mr. Jihad, how are you? Are you still live? 
Yeah, thank God we are. What do you want to say? You're live us? right now? Yes, we are. Hey, CP, I just, can I ask you something? Sure, go ahead. How, how can you prove to me that Christianity is true if you were, uh, if your objective is to prove it? Well, you know, first of all, I should not be uh, worried about proving to you Christianity because if God is true, if God is true, he can prove himself to you. So the logic is that you are asking the weak man to prove the strong God to be strong. That's weird, isn't it? What do you think? Well, you, I, I, look, you make some strong arguments. Okay, so I, I've watched you for, you know, a few years now. And you, and hate, you, make me. Some, and you huh? hate me. And you hate me. I've been again. I, I mean, I, I look. There's no denying the fact that you kind of have a vendetta against Islam, and you kind of have a bias towards it, and mm. you hate it. Mm. But at the same time, you make some strong arguments. But how I am? I am. How I'm by? I mean, how I'm not fair? And I'm saying I'm I just said you argument. made some. I just said you make some strong okay. arguments. Okay. But okay. at the same time, it's mm. quite apparent that you hate that you hate Islam. Mm. Well, for sure, I hate Islam. Islam is a disgusting cult. Why not? Is that wrong? Right. So that's why I'm asking you what, you know, bring bring your proof hmm. of Christianity. Let me see it. Okay. And, First no, of all, let me, let me ask you, do you believe that Christ, he has, and uh, he, he is an amazing person who did a lot of miracles? Do you believe in that or not? I, yeah, I, I do. Okay. So now we... We're, that's good. So we're not starting from zero. We are starting from the point where Jesus, he can do miracles, what nobody can do. Do you agree with that? I, I agree with it. Okay. So as long as Jesus, he can do what nobody can do, that's God, my friend. To make it simple, can Allah do what Jesus can do? If you say yes, you have to prove it. Well, are we you, believe. Well, no, are you in the kitchen or in, you are in the bathroom? Where are you? No, neither, neither, neither. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> um, at the end of the day, what I'm saying is, is that, you know, I watched uh, Muhammad Hijab and Bart Ehrman. Uh, I watched the whole thing through and yeah. through, okay. and I also watched him and Jordan Peterson through and through. Okay. And it just, I mean, you know, I mean. If, if you listen to those academic historians, they're going to tell you that Jesus was crucified. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Based mm -hmm. off of history. But mm -hmm. at the same time, some of them say that, you know, Jesus, you know, was born naturally. And he was born with two parents and stuff well, like you know, that. If this is true, then the Quran is lying anyway. Right. I, well, I'm, I'm telling you, you have some good arguments so we can mm -hmm. put that to the side i'm asking you my friend when, when we say when we say uh, a scholar is who they are atheists i mean they are atheists anyways what do you expect them they will believe in miraculous uh, birth no they are atheists they don't believe in anything of this you know so an atheist is an atheist so why do you expect an atheist to prove to you who's jesus but you in the same time you will notice you can go right now and search you will find that atheists now they come to a conclusion that jesus was having let us say an ability to heal by uh, like some kind of uh, you know he hypnotized the people and he made them he healed them but it's not because of god but he have a special something special about him so they could not find something negative about him and they could not uh, uh, let us say disapprove what he did because history report all over by people who they aren't christian i couldn't find i couldn't find anything bad about him no, no, I'm not. I'm not saying that. I'm saying even the atheists, who they are the enemy of Christianity, they at the end they are coming to say, well, he did a lot of uh, things. They call it miracle. Yes, he did them, but because he have a special ability of healing, but not it's not from God. But they can't explain to us how you can do that. You know, so atheists they can say whatever they want. They are atheists anyway. They believe that they are monkeys. So what? I, why I want to be worry about somebody he believes is an ape. Look, I, 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 it seems like he was crucified, but at the end of the day, how can I be sure that he was resurrected? That's what I'm asking you. 
I mean, where is the proof of this? And and I mean, but, you know, if, why, if I go why, by if I go by okay. history of what I read oh, and no, what you I see, see, you see, I could us. conclude he's crucified. Okay. But how can I conclude he's resurrect, resurrected? Because it, you know, those who witness him and he appeared to them, and they even his disciple, he asked to see his uh, his hands. He could not believe it. You know, he said, oh, uh, "I will not believe that he is his his." He's resurrected unless I see his hand and his wounds. So the exam and the, his disciples themselves, they were like, uh, uh, how this happened, you know? And they question and they examine his hands. So it's not only him appearing to them. They want to see his wounds. So did, it, did his hands have holes in them? Yeah, this why he, he, put, he, he put his hand on them. So they were asking, well, if he is the one who is resurrected, well, then he should have the wounds. He should have the spear in his chest. He should have the nails in his feet, in his hands. So, and this is why Jesus, he said, God bless those who, you know, who believe, but they did not see. They insist to see. So, if you go to the first, uh, uh, first John, he says to you, we saw him, we touch him, we know him. Why? Because there is some agnostic. This is where Muhammad he come with this idea. Okay, so I'll read about I'll read about what you're saying. But my, my other question is is how come in Christianity we only have three years of his life and we don't have his early years about when Jesus was younger and what he did when he was a kid and if he got or 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 anything like that or because I I know some other stories some from academic sources some from. Islamic sources, which some of the stories are consistent with history from Islam, like what? But such as such as what, what Paul did, what Paul did, hmm. what Paul and did, you know, and you know what Paul did, what he did. He was so. I mean, you you, you know how Paul in the beginning he he persecuted uh, Isa, okay, and you know he was against him. Okay. And then he basically, because Paul was a citizen of both Israel mm. and Rome, okay. he he went to Rome and he he started telling them they don't have to follow the original laws of the Torah. Mm. Okay. So that's what I understand. Mm. Okay, no problem. But you, my friend, he, Islamic Islamic history is a stupid history, and I will tell you why. You just mentioned to me that uh, uh, why we don't have uh, about the childhood of Muhammad. And then I, I can ask you not the same Muhammad, question not of, 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 of Jesus. I can ask you the same thing about where the childhood of Muhammad in the Quran. Where? Yeah, but we have a lot of descriptions but of all his actions. The description is, is, a, is a stupid. Like, you know, the hadith says when Muhammad's mother, she gave birth to him, a light came from her vagina. Who in the world want to believe such a garbage? Because how nobody, nobody I... saw it? The light I went all the way. Yeah. way. The light went all the way to Damascus, and then even his family they did not see that. Where is this coming from? So the stories about Muhammad, written about Muhammad, they don't make sense. And even Muslims, they most of them they just agree with them. And then we find that the stories Muhammad he is copying about Jesus is from books which we Christian will reject. As an example, Jesus when he was a child, he created from the mud the bird. This is the Quran. But this is stolen from books, which is we Christian we reject. But you need to ask yourself why we reject that. Why we reject it? Because there's no proof of those books. It's just a story. So how we can accept? But it? wouldn't they have gotten those sources from somewhere when they? It doesn't matter. Like... People, you know, my friend, this this is telling you that the Christians were very serious, not to accept any story, even this story which about Jesus he created from the mother bird, you know, and. Uh, why we will deny that? I mean, that will make us give us more proof of Jesus being God to you, correct? What that what, well, that, would, what that will do damage to me as a Christian? Nothing. That will make Jesus more powerful to prove to you that He is God, because He can create from the mother bird. So we, as a Christian, we do not need such a story, which we believe is a fabrication, to make Jesus or to create the Creator Jesus. Jesus already, he gave eyes to the one who is blind. And then, so and then could, there's one more created, story I heard listen, I wanted Jihad, to He created to already, he created, he gave eyes to the one who cannot see. He created a new eyes for him. So 
Jis already is a crea cre creator, and we do not need a story. There's no proof of it. Where Muhammad got this story from? He did not tell you. Who is the witness for it? Okay, well, he did not tell well, you. What about the story? Who is where the name? Who is the name of the one who witnessed it? He did not tell you. Who is the name of the of the disciple of Jesus? He did not tell you. Okay, who is Jesus? He did not tell you. Even his name is Isa. You are an Arab. I am an Arab. You know that not a single Christian called him Isa, correct? They call him uh, Yeshua. Yeshua. Yeshua or Yeshua. Yeah. So where is Isa coming from? So all everything he brought about this Isa, we don't know where it's coming from. But I know, based on my study, Muhammad is a foolish man. He thought that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, she is the same mother, Maryam, of the mother of Jesus. This is why he says, oh, sister of Aaron. And this is why he told the Muslims that it's Mary, the same Aaron. No. Yeah, the same Aaron. No, there's one Aaron. There's no, two, there's no two Aaron. And then this is why Muhammad, uh, he claimed that Maryam, the sister of Aaron, she is the mother of Jesus. And she have a father. His name is Omran. But Omran is the father of Aaron. <laughs> yeah, you know? that's that. Okay, so I'm I'm giving it to you on that. But at the at the end of the day, I'm, I'm giving it to you on. We'll put we'll put the Islamic sources to the side because you have some points, and and I'll I'll look at them. But mm. at the end of the day, what I've really been investigating is I I just wanted to know who Jesus is outside of the New Testament. That's yeah. all. Well, you know, That's all uh, uh, you know, at the end of the day, Jihad, you see, I cannot, I cannot create for you a new book just to, uh, to, to, to convince you. For me, the New Testament is where I learned about Jesus. However, uh, there is a lot of things which nobody can explain about, uh, what things happen around us today. As an example, you know, Jesus, uh, is a person let us say he's a figure people believe in him and then you will find that the person who believe in jesus he changed for good not for wrong you believe in muhammad you want to do suicide bombing you believe in jesus you, know, you, you believe in jesus you love everybody even if you were a criminal so the the miracle is like when the muslims say you will not convert to islam it changed my life okay well, you became a terrorist now you hate everybody now you hate your friends. Now you hate even your, even the Quran says you cannot be loving. You cannot be what to your own parents, to your own families, if they don't, if they oppose Allah. Right. So I saw that verse, and then I asked some of my, you know, fellow Muslims about it, yeah. and they said that this is, this is just in the war time. What war? Those are they family. said that they said that uh, this up. Uh, they said that if if they are not driving you from your home, they are not attacking you. What does you have don't to do, have to... my friend? What attacking but, you? Okay, hold on. Be, when, because when... Abu Bakr and his son were in opposing armies. And okay, you know... just just uh, hold on. Just just to show you that this is absolutely a lie. Go to his. We Christians, we Christian, we did not kick you out from your land, did we? Ah, uh, well, no, not in the Arabian Peninsula, no. So where Muhammad was in the Arabian Peninsula. So why he said, go and kill the Christians and force them to pay the jizya. Here we go. I will never oppose you. But those, you. Those, those were not the Christians of the Arabian. Those were the ones in Syria when they went to Syria. My friend, even Muhammad is the one who sent the letter to Syria, says, convert or I will kill you. <laughs> so it's not them who oppose you. And it's not them, them who send you a letter that says, convert or else. And it's not them who come to your land. It's they, it's you who came to their land. So look what you are doing, Jihad. Your name is Jihad. So I'm going to do Jihad on the Christians if they don't believe in Allah. Chapter 9, verse 29 says, Fight those who don't believe in Allah in the last days from the Christians. So not because they are fighting you, but because they don't believe in Allah. Correct? The verse explains Yeah. Something. Okay, so the Christian they did not the Muslim they say the Jews they oppose Muhammad, the Jews they fought Muhammad, I will let it go. The Christians they, they give shelter to Muhammad. If you been they give shelter to Muhammad, they protected him. So why you want to kill them? You will find the answer in the same chapter when he when Muhammad he uh, killed all the, uh, uh, the the one who opposed him, he forbid non-Muslims to enter the Kaaba and to enter Mecca. 
And now the Muslim, they start wondering if we have nobody coming to the Kaaba except Muslims, but we are still a few in number, how we will make money? Who's going to come and do Hajj, spend money in trade and business? So Muhammad said to them, well, you know what? If you are afraid to be poor, read the chapter 9, verse 28. If you are afraid of a poverty or poverty, Allah will enrich you. Allah will enrich you. So what is it? You read, bounty. read the verse. Yeah, read the verse again. It says, fight those who don't believe in Allah. So go and take their money. So he, he fighting the Christians, killing the Christian. It's not because they are fighting Muhammad, because Muhammad is trying to solve a poverty problem. He killed all those who have business, all those who do business. And now what I we will you. do? Go and kill the Christians and take their money. And that's why he's saying, let them pay. You see? Not convert until they pay. I got you, CP. I okay. got you. But at the end of the day, let me tell you something. Hmm. When, I, when I look at this objectively, what I see is that, look, you, you, can't, you can't sit there and say that the history of the, you know, the Middle East was, was, uh, was a, a, a fun one before Islam. You had the Assyrians, they killed the Chaldeans, they killed, you know, there were so many wars before Islam. And what, what happens is, you know, one tribe comes in, they kill another, they assimilate, and then, you know, they become one. The only difference with Islam is the, these things came into the religion. So what people practiced in war, just because it's war, they did it. But Islam came and put all these war practices into the religion. That's the difference. No, as you, as you have. You see, I, I would take advantage that you speak Arabic and you are an Arab. If I say to you, no, attack the, attack the Romans so we can get their, their blown the girls. Is that a teaching of religion? To get blonde girls? Yeah. I mean, if if I if I have a brain, it just sounds like you know, it just sounds like people are are, are chasing dunya or chasing you know, yes. women. Yeah. Okay. So this is what your prophet did. And here we can see the difference between your prophet and Christianity. Jesus, he did not say to us, attack the you know the the Roman. They are occupying the land, actually. <laughs> you know, he did not say go attack the Romans so we can get a bunch of women. What Muhammad he did, he said to his companion, Uguzu, Rum, attack the Roman. Attack the Roman. Yeah. Attack the Roman. Exactly. Attack the Roman so we can get the blonde girls. And then a guy he said to him, Oh, don't Muhammad, don't you know tempt us by attacking the Roman just to get the blonde girls. Muhammad he called him hypocrite. <laughs> he is the hypocrite. So when you say to me, well, at that time, the people, they kill each other. Okay, there are people, they are, you know, greedy. They are, this is God now. Okay. Suppose the religion is coming to fix the earth, not to make it worse. Right. So what, 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 what I'm saying to you is, yeah, people killed each other. There was warfare. All, all the things that Muslims did, other people did. But the, the only difference is, is that all these things are in Islam, whereas you know is it godly uh jihad is it godly, it it, it, is it it, godly it, it, to it, say it, is it godly to say attack the roman not because they don't believe not because they are you know fighting us attack them yeah, so we can get the, the, and the military component of islam that doesn't really have anything to do with religion it's more of the military exactly. so politics. Muhammad, obviously he is trying to tempt his men just to go and fight for him as simple as that he's a satanic now you ask me about I jesus know. what is the proof well, Jesus yeah, I just oppose. want to know about Jesus. Jesus, he opposed everything Muhammad he do. Jesus, he asked us for forgiveness. If somebody... Well, you know, I was taught that, that Jesus and Muhammad were brothers in faith and they came with the same no, message. No, absolutely. Yeah, this is absolutely uh, false. There's no way. You know, when Muhammad, he make a verse in the Quran saying, Tawheed, yani. we'll What Tawheed? Ahead. You know, Muslim, you don't believe in Tawheed. tawheed you know what Tawheed mean? You speak Arabic. Yeah, that means the oneness of Allah. No, or, no, no. Or, okay, I will give you a sentence and then you will see how wrong you are. 
Tawhid is bringing things Tawhid. together. No, hold on. No, it's bringing uh, things together. Bring things together. So it's not one. Uniting making it things. one, but make it, make it united. No, Tawhid. If it's if it's one, you you cannot make Tawhid. If it's one already, it is Wahid. Tawhid is unifying things. You just say it. Make it yeah, one. but Arabic has different meaning. No, it means no, no, it, it no. Could be Arabic all the time is, no, or no. something is no, very no. long. No, whatever no. it is. No, no. Tawheed, Tawheed means unifying things together, and you are the one who gave me definition. You said making things one, making things. So if you Muslim believe in Tawheed, that means you don't believe in the oneness of God. You believe in unification of God, and this is what Muhammad was teaching you actually. You wanna you wanna merge gods together. Rabbu Shara. Al Akbar, which is the sun god, and Allah, which is the moon god. So this is why when Muhammad he says Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, the Arab they said to him, Well, Muhammad he have one god supposedly now he have two, Allah and the Rahman. So what Muhammad he said, he said, Well, I call him ar-Rahman, or I call him other name. All beautiful names belong to Allah. <laughs> Right, so so I that was like Allah's attributes, Ar Rahman, Ar no, no, Al Hakim, Ar Razak. Okay, just wait. You originally you are from Iraq, right? No, I'm 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 Palestinian. Okay, so the 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 Aramaic people, the one of the names they use for God is Rahman or Rahimu. You know, yeah, Rahimu. So Muhammad. Suddenly he decided he liked this name. Suddenly this name appeared in the Quran. Muhammad he was a messenger uh, for long, for many years. And then suddenly the name of Ar Rahman appeared. Where was Ar Rahman in the beginning of Islam? Why Muhammad did not mention it if now we see in the Quran, in every almost every chapter, start with Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman, Ar Rahman. But then you need to ask yourself: first time Muhammad he mentioned the word Ar Rahman, it was in chapter seventeen, verse one ten. That's mean Muhammad he did not mention Ar Rahman for most of his life. Why this name disappear? Muhammad he copied. He heard. He received a letter. Go and read the interpretation. He received a letter from Rahman al Yamama. His name is Rahman. So then he wrote back to Rahman al Yamama. He says, Bismillah ar Rahman al Rahim. They said to him, Okay, I'm just letting you know, I'm not arguing with you, okay? I, no, I know that you studied. You, even the names of your God is a, is a theft. Because if this is the name of your God from the beginning, should he should say it from the beginning, from the first day he met him, or he sent his, his messenger to him, like Jibreel. Why this name comes so late? And then when he when they don't get you busted, believe in Jibril too? J Jibril in the Quran is a is a silly Jibril, stupid. Gabriel, this, you don't have Gabriel. You have Jibril. Even the name is wrong. But listen, uh, Ajihad. If I say to you that there's an angel come to me and told me read, and I told him I can't read, and then he said to me read again, and I told him I can't read, and each time I say to him to him that he squeezed me. Isn't this stupid? I mean, it's, it's, there's, I have questions in my mind about this kind of, some of this stuff, it seems, I don't know. You know, you know I, I, get, I, I get what you're saying. I don't want to fully say stuff, but I understand what you're saying. Okay. But, but, but I don't like, about... the, I don't want to, I don't want to, my friend, I don't want to, but I understand you. Okay. So you understand that obviously this is a fraud. Because if an angel, As I, said, by, I don't want to say if stuff, an angel, if an angel sent by God, God he knew that Muhammad he knew how to read or not, correct? Yeah, I mean. Okay, so why Allah say to him? Why Allah say to him, read Iqra is not recite. You remember, this is the first word. Recite is something from your memory. If I say to you recite, it means I'm saying to you say something from your memory. So if the word Iqra, some Muslim they try to be smart, they say, oh, he's saying to him recite. Why Muhammad would say I can't recite? <laughs> he can't. I mean, honestly, I, I always I always understood Iqra as read myself. It is read. It is read. It's not recite. 
But the Muslim, they try to fix it. They say, oh, he's saying to him, recite. And so why Muhammad saying I can't recite? <laughs> but as I said, Arabic words can have different meanings. No, no, you know? no, no, no. Actually, first of all, this is not an Arabic word. This is an Aramaic word. Coming from Qur'a. Arra wa ra'a. Arra means he spoke. Ra'a means he saw. Qur'a. So, Qur'a is not, uh, the, the Quran is not even Arabic. There's no Arabic. Arabic is a mix of languages. But anyway, are, are you convinced with me, Jihad, that your prophet is a fraud or not yet? You know, this is this is a public platform. So, I'm, I'm telling you, you have some good points. And uh, so, you are, that's you know, it. you are not going to say because it's a public platform platform but in your heart you agree Muhammad is a fraud I said you have some valid points yeah but you agree obviously you are trying to avoid to answer my question because obviously you agree if that's the inference you want to make then fine no I'm not making it is what it is either you say this is what it is or you say it's not do you agree that the story of Muhammad that the angel is squeezing him is a lie? Or you believe it's true? I mean, th th there's some stuff that, that I question, sure. But okay, so it's a lie. Day, so Muhammad is a liar, you agreed. So now, you know, as long as you decide to leave Islam, I'm really happy for you. I'm re Actually, I'm surprised. The last time you called me, you called me names. You were upset for me. I'm not making any rash decisions right now. All no, no. What I'm, all happened I'm to saying... you? I mean, what happened to you? How many times you called me? And last time, especially last time, you were so angry for me. Yeah, because uh, sometimes I feel that you're you have a vendetta against this against, or it comes from a place of of hatred. But my friend, I mean? even when you say that, if I have a hatred, as you claim, and I don't, because I don't hate you, why I want to hate you? Well, what is personal between me and you? Nothing. If I hate you, I will close my chat right now. I go to, I'm speaking here for many hours. I lost my voice. So if I hate you, I hate you, uh, Jihad. Why I want to speak to you? Why I want to show you the truth? Why I want to tell you who cares if you convert or not? What I will get from it? Nothing. But I'm really surprised that you are a person who gets so angry from me, especially last time when you called me last time. And actually, I thought I blocked you because you were, you were very rude to me, you know? I thought I blocked you, but I'm surprised you are not. Did you make a new name? No, same one. Is it the same one? No, okay. I don't think I was rude. I was just telling you about. Uh... No, you were. Yeah, I remember. You were so like you were so aggressive in your words, and uh, even I think you used a dirty word with me. No, 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 no. I never use dirty words, but sometimes I talk loud. But that's beside no, the point. No. Who okay, cares? but I remember that you were very aggressive, and uh, and I believe I hang up on you. Correct. I think I hang up on you. Correct. Did I hang up on you? Yeah. Okay. So what happened now? Why you are? Why you think that? Really... It was something. It was something about where's the original. But I said something about where's the original Bible. Something like that. I don't no, remember. But I'm saying now, what happened to you? Why you were so rejecting too much to what I say, and now you found that many of things I say, I got many good points. What happened? In some things. Okay, but. If if some things are true, I am saying that means Islam is false anyway. Because it's a, it's 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 a struggle. Because at the end of the day, it's like it's like you you want your faith to be strong, and you want to believe that you have the truth, and you want to you know you you want it, you want it, and then here comes somebody who says all this stuff that makes your mind go in circles, and and it made me angry. Okay, I understand, but you notice that you know uh, uh, you who rejected what I am saying, and you were arguing with me for a long time. For how long you call me now? I mean, how many a year, two years? How long? Yeah, something like that. Okay, so two years of calling me and arguing and disagreeing and etc. And now you come to the conclusion that you know what? There's many things this guy is saying is true. I'm sure a lot of people came to that conclusion. Okay, thank you very much. But if this is the conclusion, that means Muhammad is a false name. Yeah. Well, and, okay, thank you very much. So Muhammad is a false prophet. You just said, yeah, I agree with you. Now let us talk about Jesus as long as you decide to leave Islam, and I'm happy for you. Ask me about Jesus. You said 
what is the proof that Jesus is God? Or what is the proof he's not God? No, I just said, what is your proof that uh, Christianity is true? You see, what true? is the proof? The Christianity is for us is the Messiah. It's not, it's not even a book. It's not even phrase. It is the Messiah himself. The Messiah, he is the walking, talking, living word of God. He is God word, and he is God, for God is the word too. So when we speak about the Messiah, and I ask myself how I can prove to my friend Jihad here that the Messiah is God, the question is, why I cannot ask God to show Jihad that he's God? Who can do a better job, you think? Christian Prince or God himself? God, he can do that, right? Yeah, because the whole, the whole you see, when, when I look at things objectively about Islam, I can find fault in it, right? But I can also do the same thing about Christianity, no, such as what... No, you cannot. You give me give me the fault. Go ahead. Well, what what about the all the you know the Gnostic Gospels, for example, and then you had the Council of Nicaea, which I mentioned before. My friend, the the Council of Nicaea is just they buried the Romans. They came in when they converted to Christianity, and they found all these scriptures in Egypt. You know, my friend, and my you friend. had different. You the had Bibles, a different. The Bible is written long before that council. Have nothing to do with the council. So when John he write, the council does not exist. When Luke he write, the council does not exist. So this is all is an excuse for the one who have no excuse. Secondly, even the council of Nicaea when it happened, it was between two groups. Both of them they believe that Jesus is God. The other one believe that Jesus have a beginning time, which means God he got a son in a certain point. The other group says no. The Messiah is a son of God since the beginning of time. There's no time. There's no birth time. So, so nobody, so nobody at that time believed that he was just a prophet, and no, they followed no, him like no, a prophet. No, they believe he's a son of God. No, you know, whoever says that, that he to came you, as a messenger. No, they believe he is son of God. They believe he's God, and actually, they were more, let's say, more aggressive in the belief to the point that this God, like uh, you see, this is why I say to you that. Uh, uh, if you go to First John, the First John, the Book of John, First John, John, uh, uh, the letters of John, you will see that he says, "We touch him, we saw him, we, you know, we hold him, we know him." Why? Because there's some that those are agnostic. They start saying that God, when he come to us in the Messiah, he did not come with real a human body like us. He's God. So those people they believe in him as God, but they are so much against the idea of God coming in the flesh of a normal person because there's no way Jesus is like everybody. That's why, why John, he was saying, we hold him, we touch him, we saw him, we know him, you know, we witness him, he's real. His flesh is real. So it was a response for those who start saying those things. But at the end of the day, all of them, they agree that Jesus is God. And actually the other side is more aggressive in the belief from us. To the point they don't want to believe that Jesus, the true flesh of Jesus was in the cross. They say, this is why Muhammad, he got his idea that his uh, God, he made them, you know, uh, have a flesh look like Jesus in the cross. So this group of people, Muhammad, they adopt their story, which is very weird. So where did the story come from? Nothing, just because they are being fanatic of being, you know, believing in God. God, he should be always. I mean, well, there's no way God will will uh, will let them take him to the cross. So he must. Uh, so they believe he was on the cross, but they believe it was a flesh of God gift to them. Like he did them uh, crucify a flesh, but he is not there. That's what they believe. So they believe Christ was crucified, but they believe that this is a flesh, which is God is not in that flesh. And this is where Muhammad okay. he come. Muhammad he come with such a you know such a false teaching. This is why we Christian we rejected them, you know. So those people don't did not believe that Jesus is not God. They believe that he's God. So, oh, what, so they believe he's God, but they believe that uh, the one who was crucified was was a flesh. Was the flesh ones who oppose because the ones God who is so holy. So they have let us say. 
they have a higher standard in their in their understanding of God. That God, there's no way he have a flesh like us, a human like us. And then us. those, and then that was just a small group of people that said that, and then and then the council came just to clear it up. Is what you're saying? Well, a smaller group or bigger group, obviously, they are demolished. Why? Because the majority of the Christian did not agree with them, and obviously, they are wrong. This is why in in this in Nicaea, so none of so none of the so, so none maybe, of them maybe were you don't killed. understand what happened in Nicaea. It's not like they bring them and they kill them. They have a debate. It was a debate. So those group who believe in this, and those group who believe in that, both of them they believe that Jesus is God. They come to a debate. And the one who wanted to prove that he is what they think, they lost. It's not like they, they killed them. It's not like the king, he brought them. He says, hey, if you don't believe in this, we are going to kill you. It was a debate, my friend. Okay, so if there's contradictions in the Quran, which, you know, maybe there is, um, is there no contradictions in the Bible either? Or we're... we're somebody can question okay it you know, says always, this here always there is a contradiction when we have ignorance as an example i can say uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know person, son of david say, or son of joseph uh, he you can know, say well in stuff. one verse in the bible it says he have his house have 15 rooms and the other verse it says he have uh, 20 rooms which one of them is correct well the guy yeah, is but you'll, his... you'll you'll do something like that with islam something small no, like no, that so i no, have to be no. fair you see first of all contradiction it have to be about uh, word of God God he said God he opposed himself uh, the Bible is a book of books it's not just a book and this book contains history and you don't believe that it's the direct revelation like direct words that's not what you My friend, guys it's believe very, it's very silly it's very silly to believe that everything written in the book is God talking why? because the book says Satan is talking too as an example when I ask you as a Muslim, and now you are not a Muslim anymore, thank God. When I ask you, I never you, said yes or no. I'm you just, said that I'm already. Just, you agree that my I'm, I'm just. I'm, okay, okay, no problem. Listen, I'm, my friend, when, you can't. Don't don't push this right now. This is okay, not the no time. No, okay. I'm just. I'm just saying you have good points. Jihad, Please, yeah. this is okay. not fair. Jihad, jihad, jihad. It's not if, fair to do if, that. If I ask you, is the Quran is the word of God? What you will say? What I will say is that it, there's some questions. No, no. Let us say, okay, question. Forget about this. But according to Islam, the Quran is every word there is a word of God, correct? In Islam, every yeah. word in the Quran yeah. is from Allah. Okay. But then we go in the Quran, we find that the 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 ant, the ant is making a Quran. The ant. Ant. Namel. Yeah. There's a chapter in the Quran, it's called the chapter of the ants. Why? Because ants are talking and they are making Quran. So how Muslim they say every word in the Quran from Allah, and then we find the ant making Quran. Read with me. Is that right? Read with me, my friend. I don't know, it's, it's funny. And when he arrived to the valley of the ants, which is a Suleiman, you know, one of the ants, she said, well, enter your habitation, otherwise Suleiman will crush you with his army. Well, this is the ant talking. So how the Muslim they say every word in the Quran is from Allah? Did the ant say, say that or Allah saying that? So Muslims in general, they are very silly in their understanding of what is the word of Allah mean. Because either you say everything there is Allah speaking, or you say the ant is talking, shaitan is talking, the chicken is talking, because this is what the Quran is saying. So, and the funny, uh, Muhammad, he claimed that Allah told him, that nobody can make Quran like the Quran, and then we find the end making Quran, and then we find the hudhud making Quran. Here we go, and, th and this is Suleiman making Quran. At the end of the day, we all believe in the same God. No, we don't. But, no, 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 we don't. We don't. We but don't. you know, no, if, no. if if you want to say the Bible has changed, fine. But also, the possibility exists that the Quran has been changed no, too. My friend, my friend. But first, first of we all, we have to come back. We have to come back to the common ground. No, we don't have common the ground. common ground. We don't have any. We don't have any. See, Muhammad is a thief. He is stealing stories from other books, trying to make a book. Obviously, this is a stupid story. Muhammad, he stole from the Jews. 
There's a book you can download for free. It's an old book. It's called The Legion of the Jews. Go download it for free. It says the story. This is a Jewish story. They tell it to the kids. Legion. So a man, he was walking in the valley, and then he saw an ant, and he put it in his hand, and the ant, she spoke. <laughs> this, is, this is a Jewish stupid story. I have nothing to do with Bible. I have nothing to do with God. The guy, he took it. He put it in his Quran. And then Suleiman, he have a flying carpet. And he can put 600,000 chairs on it. And his army is all the way from here until Iraq. And it's the 3,000 mile long. And his army have a three brigade. One is genie. One is a human. One is a chicken or birds. That's, that's from the story? It's in the Quran, chapter 27, verse 17. Yeah, but all those de I mean, we all those we stories know, I, coming from, all those stories are the fictions of the Jews, legions of the Jews. Those stories they tell them to their kids. So the dummy Muhammad he took it, he put it in his book, claimed that Allah is the one who's telling him the story. And then this Suleiman he have a flying carpet. Is that true? All those stories are kids. Though. Can, can, I mean, can't you tell like this? The is a like those, those, like what you find in, in. Are you telling me the truth that? What's in the Quran is also in that book that you mentioned, Legions of the Jews. You can search it to yourself and you can read it, my friend. You can download it. It's called Legion of the Jews. Okay, so I mean, this is... Yeah. And you can okay. download it for free. You know? I got you. I got you. Yeah. And the, the, Jews no, have many, the Jews have many legions and Muhammad, he copy from them everything they say. Muhammad, he is an idiot. Whatever the Jews, he they say, he think that they are telling him the truth. And he, you know, he, he fell into their trap. As an example, did he were they were they lying to him? Obviously, they were making fun of him. As an example, they you know they, they asked Muhammad about Alexander the Great, Zulqarnain. Muhammad he added to the Quran. He claimed Allah told me when they came to him, he did not give him an answer. He told them, Oh, give me some time to you know, like Allah will tell me. And then Jibril came to him and he told him, Who is Zulqarnain? And then he found that the sun set in murky water and he found the sun rising in the place. And then he found the people of Gog and Mago. But the Jews are just making fun of him. They don't believe that Alexander the Great is a prophet. So they came to him, they said, this is why the Quran says, they are asking you about Zilqarnain. It was not voluntarily, it's not what, it wasn't Muhammad volunteering to explain. It was a question. So they are asking you about Zilqarnain. Tell them, I will tell they you something about They him. ask you concerning Yes, exactly. 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 So they are asking you, now we will give you the answer. So this is the question of who? Of the Jews. Making fun of him, they came to him. It's like, you know, now you don't know anything about Christianity. Like once, I have a, a, I have a person who called me. He says, I am an ex-Christian. I said, okay. And I became a Muslim. I said, okay. And he said, I know, you know, the Bible very well. I said, okay, as long as you know the Bible very well, can you... Uh, 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 can you tell me about uh, any, anything from the book of uh, uh, Jophantos? From the book of Jophantos, the Bible of Jophantos? What is so, that? I don't know. I just made up the name. What? He agreed that there's a book, it's called the book of Jophantos, and he knew it. He said, okay, tell me a verse. <laughs> so, I never heard of that. I never heard of it too. You know, I just, you know. But uh, anyway, I just made the name. To show everybody that he's a, he's a fraud, he's lying, he's not an ex, ex, ex Christian, a ex, ex, ex Christian who said to me, There's no such a book. What this book is about, you know. And here we go, Muhammad. They come to him, he claimed to be a prophet. He said, He said to him, Tell us about Zulqarnain, the prophet of Allah. Muhammad, uh oh, prophet of Allah, Zulqarnain. Okay, well, um, okay, Allah will tell me and later, you know, okay, Muhammad, he got the answer from Allah, and now we get the story that this guy. This is a story written by a person from Syria. His name is Yaqub. It's a fiction story uh, about Zulqarnain. Actually, he called him Zulqarnain, uh, the, the man with the two horns, because the Roman they they wear, they wear the hat, you know. So the man with the two horn who established for him in the earth, and then he keep going until he found where the sun set. This is in the story, you know. He found the sun set in a spring of more murky boiling water, and then the Muslim they try to fix it. They say, oh. It appeared to Zulqarnain like when the sun set in the ocean. My friend, there's no ocean. It says a spring. Spring. The ocean is not a spring. So they try to fix it. They make it more blind. And it appeared to him, CP, 
that the sun is not Allah saying that CP. The sun appear in the perspective of Zulkurnain CP. But the verse is so clear. It says, until he reached the sitting place of the sun, he found it sitting. He found it. No. Found it mean he have his perspective. It says found it. Allah tells us what he found. Allah is lying too? If the find is lie or fake, why Allah saying to us the fake? And why he did not say this is wrong? He's telling us, he is not making a comment saying that this is false. So he found it sitting in a spring of murky water. Allah confirming the find. He is not saying this is wrong. He is not saying this is not true. He is not saying this is appearance. He is saying nothing about it except he found it. Then the Muslim tried to fix it. So right. all those right. stories are proving Muhammad to be a fraud. He copies stories and he put them in the book, claiming those are coming from God. Actually, chapter 18 and chapter 27 is the best chapters to prove Muhammad to be a fraud. Chapter 18 and 27? Chapter 18 and verse uh, chapter 27 is the best. Okay. Yeah. I'll check it out. I mean, I know you have some good points. It's... Uh... It's just I just wanted to understand like who Jesus is really about you know everything about him outside of what what uh, the Bible says. I wanted to get an understanding of that, so I'll I'll keep looking into it. Yeah, but my I friend, hear you. The, the important is uh, you see when when you talk to Christians, we argue about if Jesus is God, right? Yeah, they they but, but, disagree but, between each other. No, no, no. We Christian, we believe that Jesus. All of all of us, we believe Jesus is God. There's no Christian ever exists. They don't believe in Jesus God. Never. Never, never. Never so exists. There, there was no, there was never a time where they just followed him like a prophet. My friend, God is yeah. the uh, uh, God is the first prophet because all prophecies coming from God. God is the first teacher because the first teacher is God. God is the first uh, uh, person to do miracle because all miracles come to from God. God is the first uh, master for all. He is the master of the world. So all those they belong to God. The prophet he don't prophesy. Prophet he don't prophesy. Prophet he tell you prophecy of God. God tell the prophecy to the prophet. So the prophet is just a delivery person. So people they have wrong understanding even for what the prophet is. A prophet is not. He is not the one is even talking. He is just delivering the word of God. For I do not know the future. Neither you know the future. Neither the prophet knew the future. It is God who tell the prophet to tell us about something is going to happen or a warning or etc. So God is a prophet for he is the only one who can prophesy. God is a master for he is the master of the world. God is the teacher for he is the one who teaches the whole world. God is everything we have. That's why we call him Almighty. So don't fool yourself with those words because they don't change anything. So Jesus is a prophet, he's a master, he's a teacher, he's God. Because all those belong to God. This is why you see in your Quran. So then you... I can't understand when. So if, if you want to say that. Okay. So here's what I got on the soul. So Jesus went back to heaven and he's with God or he is like, so it's just God sending his, sending his self down as a man, but then the, the body is gone, but it's just God, right? Okay. Is what you believe. I will explain to you. Or it's, it's, it's Jesus and God as two things together. That's why we, I can't we don't believe in two things, three things, four things, five things. This, this are not, God is not things, you know. God or is God. Whatever. It's no, it's not two whatever. entities. Whatever it is. Okay, so let us make it simple. I will give you an example, but it's not really about God. It's about a physical thing, because some people they are like Taliban, you know. They will say, "Oh, Christian prince is making uh, a God uh, like uh, an idolist, like he make him uh, uh, physical," you know. But I will give it to you, so you can understand better. When you look at the sun in the sky, what do you see? You see a star, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. But do you feel the heat of the sun? I mean, yeah, to okay. a certain extent, whatever what certain heat we get. You, a sun can burn you, what are your first? Yeah, uh, yeah, okay. oh, yeah, we feel it, we feel it. All right. And do you see the light of the sun? 
Yes. Okay. But isn't it the sun, light is the sun, and the light of the sun is the sun, and the heat of the sun is the sun? Yeah. Okay. Okay. But, but the sun is there, the light is here, the heat is with me. How that can be? So if the sun can do that, and it is an object created by God, can God be the Father which is in heaven? The sun, which is the light of the Father, come to us, the word of God? And the heat, which is the Holy Spirit, which is going to warm yeah, our it's, life it's, by belief? I did, I did see somebody make a good point. If, if somebody says that God is all-powerful, then why can't he do anything that he wants to do, including... You know, well, uh, here we go, we give you a proof that the God who made the sun, if the sun can do that, which is created by his own, why he cannot be that? Why he cannot be there and here and with us in the same time? Why he cannot be, exist with us in a spirit, which means invisible? Why he cannot be with us visible? And why he cannot be in the other place in the same time he can so either we believe that God is almighty and the second you can say he is almighty it's meaning everything he can do or then we should not accept him to be God the God who cannot be what he is or he want to be then he cannot be God so when we question how God he can be this way actually we are questioning that we are not believing in God actually because <laughs> why you why you call him God then if he cannot be that, you know, that is even silly. It's stupid even to say such a thing. Because the second I believe in the word God, I say there's God. And then I say, if I'm an atheist, and then I say how that can be, then that make more sense because he's an atheist. He don't believe in God anyway. So it's a question. How Look, at the, end of, at the end of the day, CP, I, I, I do know that there is a possibility of at least one person I know that watches you that could hear me on here. So that's the reason why I don't want to keep going right now. So I understand what you're saying, but I'm going to have to end it here for tonight. All right. Okay. Well, I, I believe from my heart that you are getting closer to accept Christ and I'm happy for you. Right, but I know that there's at least one person that could potentially hear me, so I just All need right. to stop. Okay, okay. thank All you. Right, my friend, take All care. Right. Take All care. right, bye. And actually, our friend Jihad here is the proof that Jesus is God. This guy, he was so angry from me. What? You know? <laughs> but isn't it amazing? They oppose you. They get angry from you, but in their heart, they notice that this is what he is saying is true. It's in the front of us. For how long we can deny it? If I don't believe in the Messiah, then I cannot believe that you called me today and you changed. I can't believe that. Because this person is always opposing me. He is so upset. He's so angry from me. The last time I hang up on him, I was really upset from him because, you know, he was very, you know, I don't know what he said, I forgot. But look what happened. The denial did not change. It looked like the denial was an appearance, but in his heart he was listening. And that what make me again believe that the Messiah is the one who showed you the truth, not me. Maybe the Messiah is using me to bring you, but it is him who is going to save you, Jihad, not me. So I say thank you, Lord. I'm so happy. I'm really tired. I spoke to him many hours, and uh, I was really surprised that mm, this conversation happened. You know, Jihad today remind me of a person he used to open a room in ch a chat room in Paltok, almost for three years, and he's a doctor from England. The name of the chat room every day is different room. Christian Prince is a fraud. Christian Prince is a liar. Don't go to Christian Prince room. Christian Prince room he is number you know number one liar. I mean every day he have different title of his chat room where the Muslim gather just to bash me. Every day for almost three years. And then one day he come to the chat room. We thought it's a fake name. 
and then he he wrote something in the chat. I saw it, but I thought maybe somebody's you know sometimes people they copy name of somebody try to make it him saying it. So I thought it's somebody fake. There's no way he would say that because he was saying this guy he's saying the truth. This time is false. And then people they start you know texting me saying this is no this is his real. We look at his name. We look at his profile. This is the real person. So I said, okay, well, if you are really what you are, you take the microphone and speak. He took the microphone. Three years, this guy is bashing me. And he's a doctor. And then he come to the conclusion that Islam is a fraud. And the second he announced that he is out of Islam and he accepted the Messiah, the Muslim, they start calling him names. He was fake. He was faking it for all those years. He never been a Muslim. This guy is paid by Christian Prince. This, I mean, this, they made him. They, they made him Satan himself. So it might be hard, but the mission is not impossible. And this is why I say. I want to take calls from Muslims only. So, you know, people who they are, you know, they have a questions, they can ask us, they can debate us, they can argue with us, and people can be the judge. What we fear, you know, especially if the person is not filthy, he don't have a filthy mouth, he is just willing to talk and discuss, and he is trying to prove us wrong. What's wrong with that? This is why their sheikhs don't dare to call us because they knew they are no match and then they will lose their career and then they can prove us wrong, or wrong because everything we say is in the front of you in the screen. We never say something coming from our mind. When, the, uh, when Jihad was talking to me, one of you, he says, I advise Christian Prince he should study more about Sabbath. My friend, I advise you not to be foolish and go search in Google right now and you will see Sabbath is a word mean holiday and every day given to the Lord. There's tons of verses in the Bible about it. So don't tell me I advise you to go study. You study. I spend my life here to refute Muslims. And now you are telling me go study. It takes you two seconds to search in Google and you will find that you are ignorant. One of the mean of Sabbath is Saturday, but the major meaning is Day of the Lord. So any holiday the, the Jews they have is Sabbath. Any holiday, any day is designated for the Lord is Sabbath. Even if it's Wednesday, even if it's Tuesday, even if it's Friday, even if it's Sunday, it is Sabbath. And actually, you see, I don't get upset from somebody who is a Muslim, he's ignorant about, about our, our belief. But what makes me more upset is a bunch of kids who they come here and suddenly they became the scholars. When they can refute themselves in two seconds searching in Google, just search it before you open your mouth. Uh, we have a Muslim here, he's supposedly smart. Let us show you what he said. And this is an example, by the way, of how uh, uh, how how people they are, uh, you know, it's like a, a child is, but it's okay. It is it is a privilege for us to use the stupid ones in order to educate the smart one. And this is an example. Please show me the Holy Trinity. And what is mean when Jesus says, my father is greater than I. <laughs> my father is greater than all. Only the father is a true God. Here, uh, O oh Israel, your God is one. Uh, Jesus is liar. Well, you are already a certified idiot. You see, the word one in the, in the Hebrew is echad. That's why the Bible says, the man, he leave his parents and he will become, he will marry a woman. And they become with her echad. So echad is a unity, is not word mean one person. 
So you are a stupid fool who do not know what you are quoting. Secondly, when Jesus, he says, my father is greater than me. I mean, how stupid you are to think that a person, he is the son. He will say that the son is greater than the father. Did you ask yourself why he called him the father, you idiot? Because the son, he approved the authority of his father. When I say my father, obviously my father is greater than I. Otherwise, why I call him father? I would call him brother. And when Jesus speak about why he is great, he speak about for God he humbled himself. He come in the he took the image of a man. So God he humbled himself. And now, Jesus, he announced him, what you see in the front of you is the humble image of the glorious God. So my father is greater than I. And then when he says, my father then greater than, I mean, he's just making blah, blah, blah. Uh, but just Jesus, he just said, my father again. And you say to me, what is the Trinity? <laughs> Each time Jesus, he said, my father, he is saying, I am the son. <laughs> Tell me the Trinity. In the same time, potato. When Jesus, he asked the Jews, what say you of Christ? They said he is a son of David. He said, well, if he is a son of David, then how David call him my God. Say it to my God, my Lord. Say it to my Lord. So even the Old Testament prove you stupid idiot. And again, if you go from the first verses in the book of Genesis, you will see that God and his spirit. And then you will find that Isaiah is speaking about the birth of the Messiah. He will be called Emmanuel. God is with us. Why the Messiah is going to be called such a name? Because he is God who is with us. People are silly. But sometimes you need a rag to wipe your shoes. Uh, and you know, uh, uh, when, when a person he says to you, the Bible says well, God is one. The Bible says God is a God. A God is not one number. It's not a number. It's a unity. You are an idiot. You know, the funny is, all those things, they can find it in Prophet Google, peace upon him, in two seconds. Just go right now and search in Google, Echad, in the Bible. You will find tons of articles even made by the Jews. Don't, don't listen to the Christians. And you will see Echad is not about one as a number, it's about unity. This is why the man, when he marry a woman, they become a God, which means they become one as unity, not one as a person. And we find that right away from the first uh, chapter in the in the Old Testament. If you go to Genesis chapter two, let me show you some reference so people will laugh at you. But anyway, as we said, we need those people so we can, you know, they give us opportunity to get to get them busted. At the same time, the Christians will learn. Which is good. All those who oppose Christ, they end supporting Christ without knowing. This is Genesis chapter 2, verse 24. And this is where the word Echad. This is Echad, do you see it? And you can reuse any translation you want. You can use Jewish, Hebrew, whatever you want. So you're an idiot. Um, anything else? Uh, 
uh, Mr. Kenta course by the way Kenta course course is a bad word in Arabic he's saying I thought Christian Prince is a legend how come he have 1000 view our friend your prophet he have 70 after more than 12 years claiming to be a prophet I have more than a thousand going live online <laughs> and I am not a prophet <laughs> like supposedly now he is putting me down like he have only 1000 <laughs> when Zach and Nick, he go online he have less than 400 go watch go watch and laugh I don't have a, a million subscriber I don't and what's wrong with 1000 I'm willing to be here even if there's 10 people who care Jesus my Lord he have a 12 disciple he's my Lord I'm not worthy of touching his feet so 1000 view thank you Lord Lord uh, you know I'm grateful for the Lord for sending all those people and as you see Muslims are leaving Islam coin us leaving Islam You are angry, you're upset, it's okay, no problem, take it easy. You know, not to forget, Muhammad he says Islam is start as a small tiny, and Islam will end as a small tiny. And not only that, he said Islam will go back to its hole like a snake. Do you guys have the hadith? Who of you did save the hadith? Who of you did save the hadith? What is the mean of six kalimat? Well, you know, the six kalimat simply is like uh, the saying the shahada. Uh, they say the kalima al tayyibah the shahada. Uh, you know, I mean, it's it's just it's it's a verses from the Quran. There's videos in the in the in YouTube about it. Muhammad he compared Islam to a snake. He said. Islam will go back to its hole, to its own hole, like a snake, going back to its hole. Uh, anyway, <clears throat> do we have any Mohammedan? What is the best way to speak to a Muslim? Uh, they like to play games disrespected and we show them reference, they get all defensive. So what? You see, first of all, don't speak about anything unless you have education. Don't be like a fool who jump into a fight, but he don't he's not ready for the fight. You know what I mean? You have to be educated in either topic, in the Bible or in Islam. Otherwise, you know, they will make fun of you. But if you are armed with knowledge, how they can make fun of you? They can start to, to make mockery. But if you are a person who is very well equipped with reference, you will, you will flip the table on them and the mockery will be to them. Verily, Islam has started as something strange and it would again revert. Of being strange as it is started, it would re re recade between the two mosques just as a, ser a serpent crawls back into its hole. And this is Sahih Hadith. Islam was small, Islam will end small. Who said that? Muhammad. And we are working in it. And if you are a Muslim and you say it's not true, that's meaning you just admit it. Muhammad is a fraud. <laughs> Choose one. Which one you will accept? Either you accept what Muhammad said to be the truth, or you say, oh, he is lying. Either way, we are winners. So choose one. Even Muhammad in different hadith, he described 
that the faith of Islam is the same as a snake. And I find it very strange that a person who claim that he is a prophet of God, he describe his faith as a snake. I find it very strange. <clears throat> Can you talk about a meme? I don't know what they mean. Can you pause the word for me in Arabic? You know, when some people, they try to resemble an Arabic word in English, for me as an Arab, I don't know. That makes no sense. Uh, do you mean Amin as like when you pray? At the end you say Amin? I'm not sure what that means. Do we have any Abdul when I leave Islam, when I call us? Even though I'm tired, I'm so happy I heard today uh, Mr. Jihad. No, the sixth kalima is Islamic because the, the, the Shahada is of the sixth kalima. This guy is a stupid, he don't know. This guy is just a kid, he does not know what he's talking about. This is the reverse of all six kanima in the declaration and the declaration of faith. So when this guy, he said this is not Islamic, that means Shahada is not Islamic. Believing in the prophet and messengers is not Islamic. I mean, this guy, he is a kid. He say whatever he want. If you can search it, people will see. This is very well known. How in the world this guy, he's saying this is not Islamic? Very stupid. I mean... When you are a kid, you can say whatever you want. And you know, the funny thing about Muhammadan, as an example, if I say something and the Muslim, they don't like it, the Muslim, they make tons of videos about Christian prince lying, but when their brother is saying something stupid, they don't make a video to refute him. Unless it's very hurting, like what Yasser Qadi, he said. That we have holes in the narrative. No? Do we have holes in the narrative? They get so upset. How you say that? Especially it came by questioning him. It was them. The Muslim, he, they brought this sheikh. They insist to get the answer from the sheikh because he is teaching them supposedly. And then the student, they make a revolution against the sheikh, the master, because he told them something they were not expecting him to say. Uh, how you become a winner when you become idolaters? That's very funny, actually. Well, you are the one who kiss black stones, not us. And you are the one who believe that if you kiss a stones and touch a stones, it erase your sin. And you are the one who pray in the direction of stones and you bow down in front of stones, and then you say idolaters. Huh, that's you know this is the, this is one of the things about Muslims. They speak too much about honor. But they got none. They do muta, and they say we are very uh, conservative. The prophet he ordered their women to give their boobs to strangers, and this was a verse in the Quran and say we cover a woman with burqa. So you cover your wife with burqa, but your wife she had to give her breast to me. What? Uh, Islam is religion of modesty, but if you divorce your wife three times, you have to hire a guy. To F her so she can come back to you, a lot of modesty. Uh, you can say whatever you want, but the truth is that it is you who have black stones, it's you who pray in the direction of stones, it's you who kiss them. Anyway, you know, if, if anyone is coming here to troll, we will block you. So you want to be an adult, you want to speak as an adult, you are welcome. But if you are just a troll, you know, we can just block you and, you know, you can deal with it. You will be upset then, right? Um, <clears throat> uh, 
Uh, anyway, I think we have enough for today. I'm so happy for our friend uh, Jihad. I'm losing my voice. I think you can tell. It's almost gone. Uh, please download the video. You know, share it with your friends. As you know, I don't keep videos on my channel. And uh, uh, in the beginning, I, I, I stopped the chat because we don't want the chatters to be here. That's why we have less number from the usual number because there's many people they come just to chat. I don't care really for the chatters. I care for people who they are coming here to learn. As simple as that. And as you see, Islam is not a religion to debate. It's funny, it's stupid. You can you cannot debate stupid thing. Just put the stupid thing in the table and people will crack down. If you remember, when Muhammad, uh, Muhammad Amimi Hijab, he made an interview with this guy from Canada, he did sing the Quran for him. Uh, and uh, the guy, he asked him, I don't understand why you did that. He said, well, we Muslims, uh, we believe if this Quran you know the Quran if you recite the Quran th that have a special uh, impact or special uh, effect so <laughs> Mimi Hijab by doing such a stupid behave he proved again the Quran to be stupid why because the chapter he was quoting it was this one and he was reading for him the verses after it He did not tell him, oh, because the Quran says, if I recite those verses to you, even if you are a mountain, you will collapse. Had we sent down this Quran on a mountain, verily, this mountain will collapse. He will bow down. He will cleave asunder. He will fear Allah. With their foolishness, they prove Islam to be false. So now we recite for him the verses, and the guy here did not cry except in Islam. But the verses are so clear. If we send those verses down, anything of the Quran, anything, brother, even if we send it down in a mountain, brother, the mountain will collapse. So we sing the Quran for this guy. It doesn't work. And the guy was looking, what is that? And he asked him, why? Why you did that? I don't understand. Why you are singing it? <laughs> and here, you notice, the God of Islam is stupid. Because if the Quran is saying the truth, then this Quran, anyone hear it, he will collapse. It was a big failure. Uh, compressor. Okay, Compressor, I have an exception for you. Do you like to call me? Do you want to talk about the, uh, Isaac being naked? Just to show you that you are stupid. Isaiah was not naked and never was naked. The nakedness for a prophet is him not wearing the, the, the clothes of the priest. This is nakedness. So he take off his izar. His, uh, he, he, they have a certain uniform for them, even rabbis. So you are stupid. But as long as you are talking about being naked, how in the world? How in the world in Isaiah it says he is naked? You are stupid. Eat it like your prophet. Let me show you what your prophet he said. How Allah he loved to see prophets naked. And then you will say, I don't want to talk about this topic no more. It's okay to be a naked prophet. It's, what's wrong with it? <laughs> so the Jews, they accuse prophet Musa that his penis is not functioning and he have a sexual disease. Allah, he went to his office. And he wanted to prove to the Jews that Moses' testicles are really good. So Allah, he waited for Moses until he went to take a shower in the water. 
in the sea, in the river, whatever. And then Musa's brother, he put his clothing in the top of the rock. And then when he put his clothing in the rock, Allah, he made the rock run and she stole his clothes. And Musa's, he grabbed his stick and he followed the rock and he starts screaming, stone, oh my garment, stone, oh my garment. Until the stone stopped near a big gathering of Israel. And this verse will reveal about it. And they saw that Moses have nothing wrong with his testicles. Are you there, Abdul? Are you there? So as long it's funny, it's stupid to see a prophet, he is naked. Well, the Bible nowhere says that he was really naked. The nakedness of a prophet, it says there actually, that he take off the clothes of a prophethood. You are a coward and you are a liar. Here we have a real naked person. And he is forced by Allah to walk naked. Read carefully. Amongst the tradition narrated by Muhammad, Messenger of Allah, and the authority of Abu Huraira, the father of the cats, that once one of the people of Israel used to take uh, people of Israel, they used to take back bath naked. Look, what the heck? They take bath naked and they look at the private part of each other. Look, what the heck? The Jews, they do that. Moses, peace upon him, he took bath alone. Oh, okay. Privacy. Uh -huh. By Allah, they said, nothing forbid Moses to take a bath along with us except he have a scortal herenia. He, Moses, once went to the bath and he placed his clothes on a stone and the stone brother moved and on it his clothes. Moses ran after it saying, stone, oh my clothes, stone, oh my clothes. Here you notice that Moses is a real Jew. He's not really wondering how in the world a stone is moving. He's worried about his wallet. That is very understood. Like imagine, Musa is not even surprised that the stone is moving. He is just worried about the clothes. It's like, it's not, I think at that time it was normal stones, they run away with the clothes. Otherwise, how come he did not surprise, I mean, with the stone running? I mean, is it normal at that time to see stone running with the clothes or something? You notice that Musa here is not wondering how in the world this happened. All what he's worried about is his wallet and his credit card. But he's a Jew, what you can say. Then Musa ran after it, saying, Oh, stone! Oh, my clothes, stone! My clothes! Oh, Bani Israel! And Bani Israel had the chance now to see his private ports. What the heck? Where is the Abdul? Kus? Mr. Kus, are you there? And this is a Sahih Hadith. This is an Al Bukhari. This is in a Muslim, and my friend, from now on, if you ever go to the beach, never put your clothing on a rock. Never. It is risky. Especially we Middle Eastern, we encounter such a thing always, all the time. But usually, it is not really the stone stain our clothes, it is other Middle Eastern person. But, you know, <laughs> if Muhammad says so, who dare to say no? I mean, have you ever seen a Muslim questioning this story? How stupid it is? We don't. Who dare? But then they say to you, how Jesus can be God and son of God in the same time? But the stone running with the clothes and he want to show a private part and the penis of a prophet. It's okay. It makes sense. And you know, when the Muslim they ask questions about the Old Testament, I have one answer for you, a bunch of Abdul. If the Old Testament is bad for you, as you claim, like the guy, he says, talk about the book of Exodus, chapter 21. So what are you stupid prophet? He approve it. Huh? As long as this book is bad, as long as this book is horrible, how in the world your prophet, he asked them to bring the Torah, 
and he put his hand on it, swearing by it, saying, I believe in thee and the one who sent thee. He did not put his hand over a verse, he put his hand over the Torah. What a bunch of Abdul you are. In the same time, Abdul, as long you are making fun of the book, how come your stupid Quran saying, Musaddiqan lima ma'ahum, believing in what they have with them, with them, not was with them. So a bunch of Abduls, they forgot that because Muhammad was a thief, he was trying to convince the Jews and the Christians, he was agreeing with them in anything they say. But then when they refuse, kill them. Take beer. <laughs> Confirming what is with them. Do you see it, Abdul? So how your stupid book confirm what is with us and you are coming to question what is with us. Are you questioning the Quran? You are. But because you are ignorant. Obviously, none of you knows what is written in your stupid book. It's too late. It's already confirmed in your book. I do not need even to prove it to you. Do you see it? Confirming what is with us, not what was with us. What is with us? My friend, I love the Chinese. I learned from them a very, uh, very important sentence by reading books about them. When the Chinese, they said he left as a donkey, he never came back as a horse. I think they meant Muhammad. I believe strongly that it was about Muhammad. You cannot make a donkey a horse. However, my friend, in the Quran, you can do that. And I can show you. Your God in the Quran is an example. He believed that Allah created the mule. Which is, I find, very funny. Did Allah really create the mule? Huh. How that can be? And he has created who? Horses, mules, and donkeys. I never heard of such a thing before. Allah created the mule? There's a kind created by itself, it's called a mule? No. A horse have sex with donkey, they have a mule. There's no something. <laughs> when you say I created the mule, and you are talking about creation, literally, then you created a kind, it's called a mule. But there's no such a thing. Mule simply is a wrong date between the wrong animals. It's a horse fell in love with a donkey. <laughs> so the one who wrote the Quran here is the mule. Allah created the mule. That's a good one. That's a very good one. No? <clears throat> anyway, I think we have good time for today. And uh, let us see how many of you will download the video, download, cut it pieces, chop it. I don't like them to be so long, but what we can do? It ends to be a very long night. And it's a good night. Especially we heard today our friend Jihad giving us a good news. So I want to say, guys, thank you uh, for being here. May the Lord bless you all. I pray for our friend Jihad to see and to announce himself, even to himself, not to us. I mean, I understand he have a family, he have people who, you know, maybe he's afraid to be in trouble, etc. We know what Islam is about. But we pray for him, regardless of anything. We pray for all the Muslims to see the truth and the truth will set them free. I remember one thing, one very important thing. Don't hate the Muslims. Hate the lies of Muhammad. Hate lies. Hate Satan. Muslims are poor people. They've been lied to. They need someone to save them, not someone to hate them. If we hate them, we become like them. We became like Muhammad. If we hate them, we follow evil. We follow Satan. Allah. Don't hate them. 
for God he loved the world he sent his only begotten son so he loved the world and the world is including the Muslims and then if they decide not to love him well this is their business for us we warn them we invite them we try our best to save them from the hellfire it's coming it's just a matter of time and the one who says I don't want your save heaven I don't want your Jesus well this is his business the Bible says when people they make fun of what you give them the jewel of God why the dust their dust from your sandals from your shoes they are not worthy for us everyone is worthy until he treat the word of God as if he's treating pigs then he is not worthy and him deserve what will happen to him in the day of judgment so we pray for the Muslims to see the truth we pray for our friend jihad we pray for his family we pray that all of them they will come to Christ and we pray that the truth will set them free thank you God bless you I wish you a great night already it is 1 22 a.m. for me time to go I apologize already almost six hours thank you I mean, again, he, he doesn't know who Gabriel is, right? Because he didn't come from an Abrahamic faith. The people of Mecca were pagan. The Quran has mentioned if this book was from other than God, they would have found in it many contradictions. If a book is without contradictions, that has no bearing on whether it comes from God or not. I've had phone books that are inerrant, but I certainly don't think God gave them. <laughs> that we believe without understanding. The brother asked a very important question that most of the scholars say that listening to music, watching movies, and most of the television programs, they're haram. So how can we have fun? Let me tell you, brother, at the outset, that having fun is permitted in Islam as long as the fun is halal fun. <laughs> that the standard narrative has holes. The prophet tells us because Satan or the devil sleeps over our nostrils. Those who oversleep and not pray Fajr on time, Satan urinates in their ears. I really do think Jesus was crucified and that he really was dead and buried. He, he thought that he was a son of God in the sense that he was specially chosen by God. I think Jesus really did think he was going to be the Messiah, the future king of Israel. I mean, that is, after all, why they crucified him. 